hit the winning touchdown with seconds to play. A typical Notre Dame finish. And folks, here is Notre Dame coach Terry Brennan. Hi, bud. Say, Terry, it seems that Notre Dame makes a habit of putting the pressure on the other team during the second half. Well, we try to be up when the other team is tiring, if we can. Terry, how do you stand all this strain? Well, I find that it helps, bud, to have a glass of orange juice uh, during the day when that tension's building up. Well, this is important for the coach as well as the team to stay fit. You know, after a hard workout or a tough game, I really crave orange juice. Well, Terry, some of your professors here could tell you that that craving is your body wisdom. Body wisdom? Uh, oh, yes, I've heard of that. Sure you have. Right now, that body wisdom is telling you body to replace wisdom. the vitamin C. Well, anyway, orange juice. I'm sure you've heard of that. And you might have even sort of associated orange juice with a healthy lifestyle. And that's probably true. It, it is a good thing, and you do need your vitamin C. But have you heard that vitamin C can help fend off colds? Or even cure cancer? Well, neither one of these have been exactly conclusively proven true, but one of the major proponents of this idea of vitamin C as being a major disease-preventing agent is a fellow by the name of Linus Pauling. Well, here he is. Man of the hour, or the man of the next few minutes, not wearing a watch, Linus Pauling. Now, he's got a really interesting backstory, and if, after talking about him for a little bit, if it's something that you want to take a look into, I do recommend it, because he has a real rags-to-riches kind of story. But ultimately, what I want to focus on is what he did after all of that, once he got into his study in the fields of chemistry and biochemistry. He is one of the most influential chemists and biochemists and scientists in general of the 20th century. In fact, he became a rather well-known peace activist. So not only did he win the Nobel Prize in chemistry, but he also won the Nobel Peace Prize. He's one of the only individuals, four, to have ever won two Nobel Prizes. He's one of only two individuals, Marie Curie being the other, to win them in two different disciplines, and he's the only individual who's won them individually in two different disciplines. Fist bump. So, uh, what are we going to focus on here? Well, despite the fact that he got into some questionable science with his uh, promotion of vitamin C, uh, specifically within things like orange juice and in supplements for improving health, in fact, even fighting cancer, the thing that we're going to focus on the most is his book called The Nature of the Chemical Bond. In it, he comes up with a value that's referred to, and that he refers to and derives, called electronegativity. So let's take a look at electronegativity and see what it helps us with in terms of the chemical bond. So to this point, we've already talked about two different types of bonds. We've talked about the ionic bond, in which the non-metal anions are formed and then metal cations are formed and that attractive force creates the ionic bond. But we've also talked about covalently bonded molecules in which there are a sharing of electrons. And if we think about two atoms that are the same, like hydrogen and hydrogen or nitrogen and nitrogen, it makes sense that those electrons in that bond are shared equally because we have the same elements and therefore the same attractive force for those electrons in the bond. But what we notice when we have two nonmetals that are different is that there's an unequal sharing, that one of the elements in the bond has a greater demand for those electrons than does the other one. And since the electrons are negatively charged, we start to notice a negative distribution of charge more towards one end of the bond than the other. So one end of the bond now becomes slightly negative, the other end of the bond becomes slightly positive, and we refer to this bond now as being polar covalent. The electrons are still shared, but there's an unequal sharing. And because of that, the bond becomes slightly polar. So what Pauling's electronegativity values allow us to do is figure out the nature of the bond. That is, it won't only tell us whether it's covalent or polar covalent, but it will also give us some indication as to whether this sharing is so unequal as to effectively be a transfer of electrons and ultimately an ionic bond. So the way that we use these values is that we take the electronegativity values created and assigned by Pauling of the elements involved, and we just calculate the difference. And that difference is then applied to something that we refer to as the bonding continuum, which you can see here, which will allow us to discuss the ionic character and the covalent character of the particular bond. So the higher the electronegativity difference, the more ionic the character, 
And the lower the electronegativity difference, the more covalent the character. Now generally the rule is if something is between 0 0.4 and 1.7, we refer to it as polar covalent. If it's below 0 0.4, we say it's nonpolar covalent. And if it's above 1.7, we say that it's ionic. So let's take a look at an example and see how we might go through calculating this. Let's take a look at the bond that exists between carbon and nitrogen. Well, carbon has an electronegativity value of approximately 2.5, and nitrogen has an electronegativity value of approximately 3. And you can find these values on most periodic tables. Really, the electronegativity difference is just the difference between those two values. So the easiest way to go about it is take the larger value and subtract the smaller value. And what we arrive at is a value of 0.5. Well, if we look at the bonding continuum, what we'll see is that 0.5 is pretty low on the bonding continuum, so this bond will have more covalent character than it will ionic character, but it is over that 0.4 threshold, so we would then say that the bond that exists between carbon and nitrogen is polar covalent. And you are never adding the electronegativities or subtracting the electronegativities of more than two elements at a time. So we only ever look at the individual bond when we're using the electronegativity values and the bonding continuum. So hopefully this video gave you a bit of more appreciation of an individual named Linus Pauling and also how to use his electronegativity values to determine the nature of the chemical bond. Thanks for watching.